These 40 days and 40 nights that Jesus spent in the wilderness praying and fasting came right after his baptism. That's where everyone who was there had seen the sky open up and watched this dove descend, and they heard a voice from heaven introduce God's own Son. Now, after something like that, everyone, including Jesus, might have expected for him to spout some wings and fly away. They may have looked for him to become some kind of superhero or someone who would cease being human in order to rescue human beings, showing up right at the nick of time and snatching them out of danger. But that's not what happened. What happened was he went from one spectacular event to a long, lonely time in the wilderness during which he may have wondered if he imagined the whole thing. 40 days, 40 nights, no sign of God at all. The sky above stayed closed up tight, no doves, no voice from heaven speaking any reassuring words, just Jesus and the desert. And finally, Jesus, the desert, and the devil. We know the story, but what's important to notice is what's on the devil's test. First, he tempted Jesus to practice magic, turn these stones into bread. Next, he called on Jesus to call on God for special protection. Throw yourself down from the parapet of the temple. And finally, he tempted him to take control of all the kingdoms of the world. All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. All along, Satan subtly suggests that Jesus deserved better than what God was giving him. Why should the Son of God be famished? Why should he so much as stub his toe or be subject to Caesar when Caesar should be subject to him? This is the story in which everyone finds out what being the Son of God really means. This is a story in which Jesus proves who he is by not seizing power, but turning it down. God's beloved will not practice magic. He will not ask for special protection or seek political power. And as much as it might surprise everyone, including him, he will remain human accepting all the usual risks that come with humanity because it's the only way humans will ever learn what Son of God really means. A Son of God is not someone who is beloved by God by rising out of his humanity, but someone who is beloved by God for sinking into it, even when things aren't so great, even when he's hungry, even when taunted by the devil himself. It's someone who can listen to every good reason in the world for becoming God's rival and remaining God's child instead. This is chiefly a story about Jesus' identity. But insofar as we belong to him, in so much as we have put him on, it's a story about our identity as well. 
There are plenty of times when we too are tempted to claim something higher for ourselves. Believe that we deserve bigger and better than what we have. That devilish voice in our head saying things like, well, if you're a child of God, shouldn't things be going a little smoother for you? If you're really a Christian, I mean, uh, don't you Christians get some benefits? I mean, shouldn't you be happier, healthier, richer, safer? That's what the voice is whispering in your ear. Now, we should know what to say. No. Be gone, Satan. I'd rather be a hungry child of God than a well-fed player on a losing team. If we can imagine that, then chances are very good that we will hear another voice speaking words to us that were spoken to Christ. This is my beloved child, the voice will say, in whom I am well pleased. And that makes sense because by our baptism we put on Christ. And being such and resisting such temptations, should we not also hear what he heard? May we pray. Father of compassion in our wilderness wanderings, we sometimes forget who we are and to whom we belong. The contrast between our baptism where we are claimed for you forever and the brutal reality of the desert that is sometimes our life makes us wonder if there isn't something better out there. Help us to say no to the shiny promises made by powers who want to enslave us. Help us to hold out for that voice from heaven that reassures us of who we really are. Help us persevere in our own journey, enduring the hungers, turning our backs on the empty promises and grabs for power that distract us so that we may emerge from our own desert ready to embrace the true destiny of all who trust in you alone. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.